Okay, as you can see, we've gotten quite a bit of the rear end teardown done. In this video segment, I'm going to cover a couple of technical issues. I'm going to talk about the soft tail shocks. We removed those. We're going to replace those with adjustable shocks, brand new adjustable shocks. We're going to talk about how to do that and why we're doing that. We're also going to talk about cutting off what I call the frame horns. These are the solid fender struts that hold the fender to the stock frame. Uh, we're going to talk about a methodology we use to remove those and why we're removing those in this segment. Okay. So, first of all, we talk about the shocks. These are the stock shocks that we removed off camera. And the reason that we're removing them is because they're not adjustable as far as height wise, or at least they're not easily adjustable. These brand new shocks, which we're going to include in our uh, soft tail bobber kit, are adjustable. Um, if you look, this part of it is what makes it adjustable. Soft tail is opposite of what you normally think of on a suspended bike by uh, opening this up will actually make the bike sit lower once we get the height we want. We'll uh, secure this jam nut, bolt that back in, and make it sit at the height we want. If you look at the stock shocks, we don't have that flexibility. Now, you can get a lowering kit that replaces the eyelet and replaces it with one of these style of adjustable shock mounts the here's the downside to that you've got to buy this piece you've got to buy a tool or at least have access to a hydraulic press because this you've got to get this out of here and this thing is under a hell of a lot of pressure because it's suspension by the time you buy the eyelet the new eyelets either the tool or go to your buddy's machine shop if your time is worth anything it's just as easy to throw in brand new shocks that are adjustable and that's the way we're looking at it also we want to make the kit as easy to us install as possible so we're just going to in replace the stock shocks with these brand new shocks the bikes 15 16 years old is probably due for shocks anyway they'll be fully adjustable for the rest of the time we can go up and down we want the bike to sit we're going to put a four under springer on it anyway and we want to be able to play with the height so that it sits perfectly level like a rigid 40s, 50s bike would have sat, about four inches of ground clearance, perfectly level across the way the old rigids from the 30s and 40s and even 50s sat. So that's the reason, that's kind of the reason for the season why we're going to go with different shocks. Okay, the other thing we're going to talk about, jack wagon, if you want to swing around, we already removed one of the frame horns. Uh, like I said before, the frame horns are there so that on a, on a soft tail, the fender travels with the frame. It's um, secured to the frame. What we're going to do to get that rigid bike look is we're going to attach the fender to the swing arm so that the fender is going to move with the wheel and the tire, the chain. Everything is going to move together with the swing arm. On the stock bike, the fender stays stationary to the frame. We're going to make it to where it moves with this. That's also a really nice looks thing because the fender will be down deep in here instead of being way up high off the tire. It's going to be right down on the tire. We're going to be able to position it so it just barely stands off the tire. Give us that authentic rigid look. It will also have that deeper pocketed look instead of coming up from here it'll come up from here and it'll be, it'll be about two or three inches lower than it would have been on the stock soft tail. So we were happy with the cut we made when we took off this fender horn, this frame horn. So happy in fact that we went ahead and used it to make a template for the other frame horn and I just took some bolts off the shelf to line up the holes that were there anyway and I want to duplicate this exact cut that I made over here that I was happy with. So we just lined it up with bolts, put a level across here, eyed it up, made sure we were really happy with it, clamped it in place, and scribed it right here. Okay? 
So, when I pull the bolts and the clamp, you can see the scribe mark I made, and that tells me exactly where I want to cut it. Now, I made the line, the idea behind the line was that it flow and follow this line right here as closely as possible so that it, once again we get that clean the, the reason the old rigid um, pan heads looked so nice is they had that clean straight line that went all the way back to the axle just a perfect line and what we want to do is we want to follow that line so that visually we don't have any inter interruption in it so we're going to start by cutting here and then we're going to leave ourselves a little bit of uh, running room so when we go to work on it with the grinder we can get that perfect line. When we come back on the next video this will be gone. We might talk about that a little bit more. We'll also talk about what we're going to do to the rear wheel. We're going to convert this to a chain. So we're going to talk about the rear, rear end conversion. And at that point we'll probably have the swing arm back on with the adjustable shocks.